Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening on Instagram. Welcome to ATP Live Monday. And uh, good evening for those who are joining on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, you're also welcome to ATP Live Monday. My name is Bibi Sela Boyde, and I'm a pediatrician. Uh, on this program, you get to ask any questions that you may have about the health of your children in the next one hour i'll do my best to answer that so please start to drop your question now but before we start please let's also share the video uh share it to your facebook page platform uh, instagram invite friends and family invite everyone and let's just get started. And I'm also going to do the same. So give me like a couple of minutes to share the video and make sure that everyone can see it and can uh, hear me. So welcome everybody. Welcome, I'm also just sharing the video links to all our various platforms. Um, So welcome to ATP Life. I hope you've been having a good uh, day so far. Uh, I have been resting for most of my day. All right, so welcome, welcome everyone. I'm just sharing the video, making sure everybody can see and you can hear me. So that's all I'm doing right now. Just give me two minutes and we'll be done. Welcome, welcome to those who are just joining us. Welcome to ATP Live Monday. Okay, so if you have any questions that has to do with the health of your children, feel free to start. Uh, dropping them now and then we'll try and answer them as soon as we finish sharing the videos and putting it up in the rightful places Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome everyone. I'm just making sure the videos are pinned. I guess I'm almost done now. One more. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to ATP Life Monday. Ask ATP Life or Ask the Pediatricians Life is a program where you can ask questions that relate to the health of your children from a pediatrician and get your answers immediately. So whether you're watching me on Instagram, you can start dropping your questions straight in the comment section, you can use the question, ask a question icon. If you're watching on YouTube, you can also drop your questions straight away and I'll be able to see them and answer them. If you're watching on our Facebook group, Ask the Pediatrician's Facebook group, you can drop your questions straight into the group and we will try and answer them. Um, if you are watching on ATP Family, ATP Silly Mom of um first time mom facebook group you have to click on the video so that it will take you to the page and then you can drop your questions there if you are watching straight from our page that's fine you can just drop your questions as comments and i'm going to see them in the um 
on my home uh, interface. So feel free to drop your questions. We have one hour to answer all the questions. However, if you still have any questions after the live section, you can always ask the questions on our Facebook groups from Mondays to Saturdays, okay? Mondays to Saturdays, you can go to any of those four Facebook groups, Ask the Pediatricians, ACP Family, ACP Still a Mom, or ACP, uh, um, the FTM Facebook group. You can go to any of those groups, drop your questions there. Our professionals, moderators will be there to so give you answers from, um, evidence-based perspective from professionals. That's the difference between our groups and any other group where you can post your questions on social media. So you, are, you can be sure you are getting an answer that is from the professionals. So feel free to drop your questions. I can see comments. I can send a question on Facebook. And I just so Facebook people, you can hear me. You can see me. I can see Instagram people. For Facebook people, let me know that you are there. Drop some comments. <laughs> I know that I'm actually live and you can all see me and you can all hear me. All right. Thank you so much. I think I will start with Instagram because I can see Instagram people's questions uh, say rolling in. Okay. I can see somebody from Facebook, Shakira. Thank you so much for letting me know. That you're there <laughs> because I was wondering why it's so quiet on Facebook. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. And I'll try and see if I can do this in the next one hour. Thank you, Fat Fabrics. Thank you for joining uh, Bells, Bells um, Chelsea. Good evening and good evening to everyone. I'm sure I'm not to mention everybody's names. Thank you, but I can see all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Amara Kings is asking the very first question on Instagram. Say good evening, Doc. Uh, please, Doc, Doc examined my baby rashes as allergies, gave us hydrocortisone and... Uh, Utilize life or life, I can't understand it. But um, after the treatment, I use blue seal and the reaction return. What do I do? Okay. Thank you so much, Amara, for that question. So anytime you go to a doctor and you, your child was treated and your child gets better and anything returns, the, what to do is to go back. You have to go back to the doctors for what we call a follow-up. Now, there are some conditions in children that will come and go for a while. And allergic conditions are like that. Allergic conditions don't disappear, uh, no matter the treatments, okay? So most of the treatment that your doctor gave you, they are what we call uh, symptomatic treatments. We are only treating the manifestation at that point. But allergic condition is something genetic, is part of who the child is. So as long as the child is exposed to whatever the child is allergic to, the rashes will always come back. So allergic skin conditions, allergic other allergic conditions like asthma or like the eczemas or um, so some have food allergies. There are so many allergic uh, kind of conditions, allergic rhinitis and all that. That has to do with the nose. They are conditions that will be coming and going for a long time. Sometimes some, some children will outgrow them. Well, sometimes it's they don't, and they will always be susceptible. What we normally try to advise is that if a child has allergic tendencies, you avoid all the triggers, things that can make the child to have the reaction. So it's not enough for you to just apply cream and all that. It's also important for you to know what are those things that could make your child to have a reaction. So we always want you to use what we call hypoallergenic products, like some of these creams and soap and powder that we use, they contain lots of chemicals. And most children who have allergies actually react to those chemicals. And it's not just only the one you apply on their skin, even the one you're using to wash their clothes, even the one on the uh, the, the bed sheets, the bed spread, the sofa, they can react to so many things. So you always have to be conscious of that and try and reduce the exposure as much as possible. Sometimes you're not even sure what they are reacting to. 
but when each episode happens what we call a flare whenever there's another flare or another episode you have to go back and your doctor most likely will re repeat the treatment sometimes parents get frustrated with that because most parents come to us looking for that magical uh, solution like one cream or one product that once you give it the, the rashes will never come back unfortunately there's nothing like that when it comes to allergic skin condition they will keep coming and going for a long time i always like to have this conversation with parents because if not you will just be going round and round all the hospitals all the doctors and you'll be wondering why it's still not going it's not going to disappear it's going to keep coming and going so just be aware of that and prepare your mind for that and then avoid it as much as possible but when it happens you have to go back and then you have to see your doctors and then they will take the next step sometimes they may have to refer you to the specialist so we have what we call the pediatric dermatologist we also have got the allergists so those are the doctors who specializes in those kind of management so they may be your friend for a long time if your child has allergic conditions so you have to keep going back to them for follow-up and i've told you what they're going to do so they don't have any magical cure but sometimes we hope that the child will outgrow it so that is that. I hope that helps you, Amara. But you can always go back to your doctor. All right. Uh, style. Uh, sorry, I can't remember. Right. Style by Bori. Say good evening, dog. My baby got a rotavirus last week, Friday. And since then, she has been poking every day. Do you mean for meeting? Before then, she goes at least five days without pooing. Okay, pooing. Okay, not poking. Okay. Um, do I need to be worried? So, uh, if a child is passing stool five times a day, for us, what is more important is the texture of the stool, not the frequency. I get these questions all the time. Mothers worry whether the baby should pass stool one time, two times, five times, 20 times. To be honest, the pediatrician is not worried about the number of times the baby passes stool, as long as the stools are normal stools, as long as they are not hard, and as long as they are not watery. As long as they are normal textures to the frequency doesn't really bother us. Okay. So whenever you're asking a question about your baby passing to the most important information we need is what is the texture of that stool? Is it watery, like urine, sinking completely into the diaper, or is it normal stool, or is it hard? like pellets, you know, that kind of a thing. So that is what we really need to know. So as long as this, whether it's five or 10 times, as long as there are no more stools, that's fine. So there's really no need for you to worry. So you've not told us how many, what is the texture of these stools. So the number of times doesn't really matter as long as there are no more stools. So if you want to update that information, then I will tell you whether you should worry or not. All right, Amara, say for more information, please see, Reaction started when doing exclusive breastfeeding, da da da, change soap, da da da, please. So I've, I think, Amara, you didn't wait to listen to my explanation before you put this because I've already told you the answer to that question. The reaction has nothing to do with exclusive breastfeeding. It, it has nothing to do with anything. There are many things a child can react to. Children can even react to water. Some children react to hot water, cold water. People react to dust in the house. We call it house dust mites. Uh, people react to everything. Animals, danders, uh, the pollings in the hair, the, the smoke. There's so many things people, children can react to. So we try as much as possible to figure out what your child is reacting to and advise you to avoid them. But sometimes the honest reason is that we don't always know what the child is reacting to. So if your doctor is able to figure out what your child is reacting to, good avoid it as much as possible it may be it may help but sometimes you don't know what the child is reacting to and there's nothing you can do about it okay but at least try as much as possible to avoid the um the common stuff you know so the soap make sure it's natural avoid anything that is chemical anything that smell nice most of the time this is a chemical that make them smell nice so avoid it so black soap or natural soap or there are products that are hypoallergenic like sebamed like dove soap they are especially made for people with sensitive skin so you may want to go for those kind of products you want to go for creams that don't have perfume in them or that as you know dermatology recommended as for 
uh, people with sensitive skin, hypoallergenic, always read all the content of what is inside there. Uh, you, you, I don't know, I can't remember the age of your baby now, but you want to make sure your baby is exclusive breastfed for the first six months because it also helps protect the baby against allergy. And when you're starting formula and other food, you want to watch. Whenever you're introducing new food, you do it gradually and you don't do it as a mix. You must give only one food at a time and check whether the child reacts to it. So if you're giving egg, only egg, and then check for five minutes whether the child comes up with the rash or granules or all those things. You must always check to be sure your child is not reacting to them. That's why we don't recommend some of these products. The popular one is Tom Brown, which is a mixture of so many things. It's not the best thing to start your baby on complementary feeding with because if your child reacts to any of the components, you will never know which one the child is reacting to. So whenever you're starting a new food, you must always give one thing at a time so and a little of it first before you give a lot so that you know what exactly if the child is reacting to it or not children react to fish they react to egg and there are many of these products that we buy in the shops there are other things that are inside them that is not really the main content so because they in the in the shop where they make them those products were there and they always write it on it so you must always read the food information all those information about allergies, okay? Unfortunately, that is the reality. <laughs> so you try your best. If you really want help, you can go and see the special, like I said, the dermatologist or the allergist. There are doctors that are actually into allergy conditions and all that. They are your best bet to see, to see how to help your, your child. All right. Um, show me for King. Say good evening, dog. My baby of 14 months has been running temperature 39 for two days. I've been given prestemo. Uh, you need to take the child to the hospital. If your child is having temperature of almost 40 degrees, you got to go to the hospital. Two days is more than enough. Okay, even even one day with a high temperature, you give her a summer, it's not coming down, you got to go to the hospital because there are many things that can make a child to have fever and we will not know until we see the child, examine the child, Sometimes we have to run blood tests sometimes. That's how we will know. So I don't like the temperature of 39. That is very high. And I really think you really need to take the child to the hospital now, like right now. So it's very important that you do that. And then the doctors will examine your child and look for the common causes of fever. And then they will tell you what to do. Sometimes we have to do blood tests, do malaria tests, do food block and all those urine culture. We do all those common things. If we can't find anything on examination that can point us to the cause of the fever, we have to do those tests and then we can now take it up from there. All right. Okay. So thank you so much. I think I'm going to post on Instagram. I'm going to go to Facebook so that I don't miss our Facebook people. I can see their question. So please, when you are writing your question, try and write it short and simple and go straight to the point. If you write it too long, you are going to blow. You are going, um, when I post your question, then I won't see the beginning, I won't see the end because it's too long. So try and keep it short and straightforward so that we, we don't, um, we can see it at one point. Thank you, Princess. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Facebook, yourself for letting me know you can see me and you can hear me. Uh, thank you, everybody who is watching. All right. So the first question is by Shakira. I say, I don't know whether this is the right place to post this self. Uh, um, but it's really hard for me to understand. Is it okay for a two year old? Is it okay if a two year old to still wake up at to eat at night? Uh, it is not okay. So, we want a two year old to eat all their food in the daytime and then for them to sleep through the night. So, by that time, they should be eating three to four times a day, but it should be during the day. A two-year-old should be sleeping through the night and not waking up to eat. Secondly, it doesn't sleep on time. That is parents' responsibility for the child, the bedtime. So bedtime is set by parents. You have to have a bedtime routine. You don't leave it to the child to decide when they sleep, okay? You need to have a bedtime routine and you need to start winding things down, okay? 
So you must have your bedtime routine that you do. So once children start getting into that routine, they know it's time for bed. So maybe it's to have a bath, maybe it's to have a story time, maybe it's to whatever, whatever you want to change to the pajamas and all that. You need to set up structure, you need to set up routine. Also start doing is that's why children get used to it. A, a two-year-old should be sleeping by 8 p.m. There's no business, they have been awake and all that. So it's a, the child cannot insist on watching cartoon. Okay, you are the parents, so you decide what happens in your house. So two-year-old does not dictate to parents, I want to watch cartoon when they should be in bed. No, that is, that is you must use a lot of what we call vitamin N. So vitamin N means saying no. So a two-year-old wants cartoon, no, that is the answer. There is no argument. There is no need to argue it. There is no need to negotiate. It is no, no, it's no. And we need to let children know the boundary. We need to let them start knowing that as early as possible. So um, there's no reason why the child should be awake and you are really trying hard. So I've told you what to do. It's not hard. I know sometimes parents, we don't like the screaming and the crying and the noise, but sometimes you just have to do it. You say your no, you stick to it. They will cry. They will make noise for the first two days. After a while, they get that when mom say no, she meant no, and then they will, add, 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 they will, they will adhere to it. So you got to step up your parenting uh, strategy. Shakira, if you go to our Facebook group, we have a lot of parenting tips on our group positive discipline trips and all that just go to our facebook group type parenting all those tips will come out for you so you will see how to do it we even have a booklet on sleep uh hygiene you know it's very important that we get children into sleep hygiene routine most children like to be awake they don't want to sleep they like to watch the cartoon they like to do whatever they like but that is where we come in as a parent and we're able to tell them no you got to sleep you got to sleep your 12 hours to 14 hours every day, and then you wake up fresh in the morning, and they would continue whatever they are watching. They can always watch it in the following day. So you must step up and learn to say no. And don't worry about the crying. That's fine. They can cry. They cry in their bed, and then they will sleep. But you got to get them used to following routine. And, and you can have a timetable. You can show them this is the time for this. This is the time for that. This is the right time is 8 p.m. We start winding down from 7 p.m. Dinner maybe 6 30 or you know you must have those structure. You, you will also find it very useful for yourself once you have that routine and structure. Um it's okay for a two-year-old to pee on his body. Uh it's so Peeing on the body has to do with potty training. So the question is, have you potty trained a two-year-old? A two-year-old who is able to talk, that he wants to pee. Uh, I can't read the rest of your question because I said it's too long again. Let me see whether I can read it in the other part. So, okay, it's not even showing on Facebook because it's too long. So a two-year-old should be potty trained. Uh, so I don't know whether you potty train a child. So if a child is able to talk, and say I can pee, I can poo, then they should go to the toilet. And you should get them in again, structure, routine. They need to learn how to do all that. So it's part of potty training. They should know where the potty is, they should know where to go, they should not poo or pee on their body. Some children are not yet potty trained, so you can at two years old when you have to start potty training. We expect them to be dry by day by age of two and to be dry by night by the age of three. That is what we expect from children. So I, hope I was able to address your question, Shakira. Um, there are parenting courses as well. If you want to online, some of them you may want, you may find them very useful as well. All right. The next question is Princess Bola. Good evening. Thank you for first time joining for the first time from US. Oh, thank you, Princess Bola. You're welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful time in US today. Uh, Neamaka Heke say good evening. How many times should a one year old baby be fed in a day? So a one year old should have two to three times a day and one to two snacks a day. So that is the you remember a one year old is still being breastfed. So they should continue to breastfeed. We expect you are breastfeeding them. And then they should have complementary feedings. They should have at least three of them. And then they should have at least one snack as well in between. So that is what we expect. If you want to know more about complementary feeding 
and the frequency, the quantity, and all that, I'm going to recommend you go to our Facebook group. We have a, a guide section. There's guide two. You can go there. All the materials are there and videos on feeding, what you feed them, how often you feed them, all those information, they are there. We also have it on our website, www.arxipediatricians.com. They are also there. Remember, that is complementary feeding the three times a day, but the, the breastfeeding should be going on with that as well, including the LD snacks. All right. Okay. I'm going to go back to face, to Instagram. Um, okay. I've answered that question. Style by Boris said, good evening. My 11 weeks old baby weighed uh, 4.6 at 10 weeks. Pet weight was 3.2. I feel she's not gaining weight. She also sleep her when she's on the breast. Okay. So, um, your, Baby was 3.2 kilos. So babies usually gain an average of, if your baby was born at term, you should gain an average of 30 grams per day if they are being exclusively breastfed. So that is roughly about 900 grams a month. Um, so your baby was, that was at 10 weeks. Your baby was weighing 4.6. So your baby has gained only about 1.4 kilos in two months or two and a half months. Um, at 20 months, we expect this to gain about 1.8, there about, or a little bit above that. It's not too far from what we expect, but we want you to keep breastfeeding this baby exclusively and then keep, keep monitoring the weight. You also did not tell us whether some babies, when they were born, if they have any health issues, they may have lost weight at the beginning. So sometimes babies can lose weight in the first two weeks of life, or if they have health issues. They may lose more weight and then they, they are now start since to gain weight. So we need all the information before we can jump and say this or that. So because you don't, you're not giving us all those information about how your baby was at birth, what has happened, what is happening now, and all that. We cannot answer that. You also didn't tell whether baby is an exclusive breastfeeding or not. So those are all the information that we need. But when you go for your next immunization. You can request to see the doctor so that they can ask you all this question, check the weights again, and advise for that. But if your baby is otherwise healthy, sucking exclusively on the breast, then the baby should be gaining averagely 30 grams a day. But remember, it's average. So the baby can gain a little bit less, the baby can gain a little bit more. I think for us, the most important thing is that the baby is not static and the baby is gaining weight. So, which is reassuring that your baby at least is not still the same, but you just need to make sure you breastfeed exclusively and more uh, frequently. I hope that's helpful. Okay, Amara saying, please, after four hours, I feel my baby of seven months is hungry, but trying to feed him, he carries it in his mouth and not swallowing. So what are you feeding him? You didn't tell us, okay? Um, remember that when your baby is seven months old, they are now on complementary feeding in addition to breast milk. That is what we expect for a seven months old. So four hours from what? From breastfeeding or from complementary feeding, we need to have that information. A seven months old baby needs to take maybe two times a day complementary feeds. So the rest should be breastfeeding. So we really need to have that information on what exactly is the four four hours from is it and you don't feel baby is hungry or there are signs that the baby gives you as well. So if it, is baby showing signs that they want to eat? Is this baby showing feeding cues? Are they trying to look for breasts? Are they trying to put their hands in their mouths? You know, all, all those kind of things. Are they crying for food? So it's, it's not just that you, some mothers just feel like the baby should always be eating. You always have to feed them, feed them. If the baby is not ready to eat, there's no point to force feed them. Sometimes when it be a complimentary feed, because their complimentary feeding is uh denser, in other words, even though it's not as big in quantity like the milk, it has more calories. So babies can stay on it for longer than they would have done if they only taking milk. So you really need to also let us know. So when you say feeding, you always have to tell us, are you talking breast milk? Are you talking complementary feeding? So we really know which one. And remember that for a seven months old, they don't need to eat their complementary feeds as frequently as they were taking breast milk, okay? 
is the breast milk that they can take as much as they like, but complimentary feeding for seven months, or should not be more than two max three times a day. That's all we expect for a seven months old. So we really need to have clarity on what you meant by that. Okay, Demi D say my 13 months old baby is. 2.3 kg. I hope there is no overweight. An average um, one year old should weigh 10 kilos. So your baby's weight is a little bit on the high side of the normal, but then that is the average. So that is what we call 100%. So some babies can be a little bit less, like 80% of, of, so anything between 80 to 120% is still normal. So your baby is on the 120%. That's the upper limit of what is normal for a one year old. But we are not going to be worried. But please make sure your baby is eating healthy, no junk food, healthy snacks, no overfeeding. Make sure they eat appropriate, you know, portion, lots of fruits, veggies, and all that. And of course, usually two year we should be very active, moving around. So we are not going to worry about that. So just for you to bear that in mind. Okay, Chami for King said, please, maybe a 14 months old, I've been having dry, broken lips with blood. Please, what's white to me? So, dry, broken lips usually is from dehydration. So, please let baby drink a lot of water. Okay, sometimes at that age, they don't remember to drink water. You have to be the one to give them water. You have to consciously make sure they are drinking water so the child is well hydrated. And that's number one. Number two, apply lip balm. Okay. So broken lips most time may not necessarily may be vitamin deficiency. Make sure first the child is well hydrated. Make sure it's not weather, like some weather, it's really dry weather, cold weather. Sometimes you can make the lips to be chapped you know and all that so for for your babies let your baby eat healthy eat fruits eat veggies they will get all the vitamins from there so that's that so if you want to give multivitamins you don't need a prescription for multivitamins there are multivitamins all over the counter you can go for any one that you like but we prefer you give your children the food that will give them the vitamins rather than giving them the vitamin syrup, but it's okay if you want to give them vitamin. But I really personally think if you should concentrate on making sure your baby is drinking water, well hydrated, and you can use lip balm or just Vaseline, make sure you are always moisturizing the lips. That's more uh, important. All right. Um, okay, show me again. Say, please, how else can I check my baby's temperature with inserting the thermometer into her anus? Every thermometer is not a rectal thermometer. There are special thermometers for using it in the anus. So don't use your regular thermometers that you buy in the shops in the anus. You're supposed to put it under the armpit. So there are different thermometers for different purposes. So most thermometers that you buy in the shops are meant for you to put under the armpit or under the tongue, you know. So read the instruction that comes with the thermometer so you know where to put it. Please, if they didn't say this thermometer is a rectal thermometer that it should be put in the anus, please do not put it in the anus, all right? And if you are putting your thermometer in the hand page and it's reading 39.4, 39 that is very high. The reason why we don't want fever to be too high is that your child can have a convulsion with very high fever. So give your parastamol and take the child to the hospital, okay? You don't need to put the thermometer in the anus and putting it on is that the easiest place to put it is under the armpit. The children doesn't disturb them. Put it under their armpit, fold it there, and wait for it to beep. Usually in two minutes, it will beep. And then read it. It's always written. It's a digital thermometer. Which that is what we want mothers to use. We don't want you to put anything in the anus or anywhere that will inconvenience the child. So please don't put the thermometer in the anus. Don't do that. That's wrong. All right. Um all right. Uh, somebody said, I drop your question in the question box. So I can't send a question in the question box. Uh, that is Bell Sam Jesse. You didn't drop your question in the question. If it's there, I will see an icon telling me it's in the question box. So it has not come in. So you may want to do it again or just put it in comments. Then we can answer it. All right. Um, I'm trying to see. Uh, where did I stop? Okay, I think I jumped some question. Okay. Um, 
So, Shami King, you are doing the wrong thing by putting your babies by trying to put the thermometer in your babies in us. That is actually very uncomfortable. You shouldn't be doing that. So, don't even do that. Just put it under the hampy. There's no special uh, reason why you should put the thermometer in the anus. And there are special thermometers for using in the anus. It's not every thermometer you can put in the anus. And usually it's doctors that do that. But there's really no reason even for that these days. We just prefer to put it in the mouth or under the armpits. So style by Boris said the stool is watery. It happens just once in a day. Uh, before she can go five days without pooing. So the stool is watery, watery like water, like urine, or is it, um, uh, you know, because babies, when they're on breast milk, they don't pass hard stool. They don't, so a lot of mothers always think the baby's stools are watery, but that is normal stool. If it looks like a goosey, you know, you have some part that is water, some part that has flakes, that is still normal stool for a baby on breast milk. It's not watery so watery stools mean you will not see the stool on top of the diaper everything soak into the diaper like urine so you really need to be sure first which one it is so because you are telling me that your baby's stool is even watery before the immunization then why were you not worried about that before because but i strongly suspect that your babies has the semi-formed stool that we normally see in newborns and babies on exclusive breastfeeding it look like a goosey soap some parts is thick up then some parts is watery that is normal so that's not diarrhea but if you can't see anything it's like it's completely like water sinking completely into the upper then that is watery and if you are seeing that three times a day or more than three times a day that is diarrhea you have to go to the hospital you have to see the doctors because we don't expect babies at that age to start having diarrhea. Okay, I can't remember the age of your baby now, but I think whether it's 10 or 14 weeks. So uh, if your baby is less than three months having diarrhea, you have to see a pediatrician. Don't give her a rest or anything. You have to see a pediatrician, but we need to know why. Okay, so that is what I really need to be sure. And when you go to the hospital, go with the diaper, with the stool, because the pediatrician wants to have a look at that stool to be sure whether it is what we worry about or it's normal stool. It's very important that we, we know that. All right, stock 91 say my baby reacts to weight. So don't give her weight at all. And remember that weight is in so many things. Most of your pastries, most of them are made from weight biscuits and all that so you really have to pay attention you have to read all the inform uh, the the food information on everything that goes into the mouth of your child before you give it's so important all right um babies uh for side by body babies uh stool pattern can change at any time it doesn't mean the fact that the baby has always passed through one without passing stool. So babies on the they can go from not passing stool for two weeks and they can go to passing stool 12 times a day. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It just can happen and that is a normal range for them. Again, as I said, the most important thing for us is the texture of that stool. So the fact that a baby was doing one before and now is doing five a day, it's not a problem for us as long as the stool textures normal so that is what is more important than just the than you know it, it, than just the frequency or the number of times or even the change in frequency that can always happen at any time we are not worried about that okay because i can see you keep emphasizing that she was only doing it once a day now she's doing five times a day it doesn't matter it can happen and it can change Okay, so and it has nothing to do with the rotavirus vaccine. Don't worry yourself about the vaccine. Um, Fifi, 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 um, say good evening, ma'am. Please, I'm um, first time mom. Congratulations. My daughter is six months old. She started eating around four months. When you say she started eating, what eating was? Maybe I've been eating from day one. I guess you mean you started complementary feeding around. Um, four months, which is wrong. You should start complementary feeding at six months. There's a reason why you should start at the right time. Um, she's doing well. Notice that eating habit reduced a week ago. I don't know. You didn't tell us like how many times you'll be eating and all that. So what is the eating habit? What is the habit that is reducing? Okay, let me tell you what I expect for your six months. So your six months old should be on breast milk only 
for the first six months of life. After six months, your baby can start complementary feeding. That is when the tummy is ready to undo complementary feeding. There's a reason why all those things are recommended. There are science behind it. It's not just because pediatricians like it that way. There are researches, there are sciences, which I'm not going to bore you guys with because you don't need all that, but there are reasons why all those recommendations are made. So please learn to trust our recommendations because when you do it wrong and it goes wrong, you're still going to end up with us. So when the pediatrician say, please do it this way, there's no added advantage trying to start your baby on complementary feeding earlier than necessary. I'm trying to show sure there's no added advantage. You can actually cause more problems for them because they tell me the intestine are not ready to handle solids earlier than six months. So eating for me for a six-month-old is breast milk, still 80% of the time, and two times a day of complementary food. So that is what I expect from your baby, and that is what is recommended. So if you are doing that, that is all. So I don't know what you mean by reduce. So how many times will we be eating for? How many times will we be eating now? So we need to have context so that we know what to advise. So just bear that in mind. And then what is the weight of your baby? advert was a waste now and all that so you really need to give the right context but that's what i really want for a six month old all right uh somebody's okay i didn't see your question but um jessica can you drop it again uh i'm gonna see if i can find out the figure like in this case i feel strongly is oil on the skin even blue so you, it is not by your feeling all right okay science is not by your feeling science is science okay there's a way we know if a child is reacting to something. So if you stop whatever you think it is that the child is reacting to, then watch out whether your baby will have the rashes or not. So if your baby still have the rashes, even though you stop all those things that you think your baby is reacting to, then it has something to do with that. So it's very simple to know if your child is reacting to something. And actually, the allergic doctors can do allergy tests. There's a way we do tests. So they can actually do those patch tests and know what exactly your child is reacting to. So it is not just by your feeling, it is by evidence, okay? So the easiest for you to do as a parent is stop and start. So you stop something, check whether when you stop it, the child is fine, okay? And if the child is fine, then maybe most likely you are right, then just stop it, that's all you need to do. But what we normally do is actually to do a challenge. So when you say something, the child is reacting to something, we stop it maybe for a month or so, and then we restart it again and see whether those rashes come back. So if it happens even before we started again, we know that it has something to do with that. Or if it stops, then when we start it again, the rashes come back, then we are very sure that, yes, it has something to do with it. So we have to have objective evidence. So, but it is okay for you to stop whatever you suspect is fine, but I'm just trying to tell you that it's not just by what you feel, you must prove it first and that is what the allergic doctors do all right so you don't have to put oil on your baby's skin it's not compulsory you put oil so anyone you want to put is fine as long as your child is not reacting to it that's the most important thing i hope that's helpful uh i'm right to say my two-year-old sleep a lot what is the definition of sleep a lot so how many hours so i need to have time contest so for pediatricians, we don't like all this sleep a lot, eat a lot, eating reduce. It, they have to be objective evidence. So if you, if you say sleep a lot, how many hours? One hour, two hours, three hours? Then how many hours in the 24 hour period of the child's sleep? That is more relevant. Then I can tell you whether it's a lot or whether it's actually normal. So because sometimes it's what you may think is abnormal may actually be normal. So you have to give us time context so that we are sure. All right, I think I'll take one more question from Instagram and I will rush back to Facebook. Uh, Fifiam is saying, my baby eating habits has drastically reduced a week now. She only eats twice and wants to suck. I, okay, I think you've dropped it before I answer your question because twice is actually okay for your six-month-old. Your baby who is six-month-old should be sucking more. Yes, that is actually the right thing for the baby to do. The baby should be sucking 80% of the time and taking only two complementary feeds in a day. So if you, um, I think you need to go and do our complementary feeding guide. I think it's very important for you to do that. What is the weight before? What is the weight now? So if you say the weight has reduced, 
I need to have figures. I need to have objective figures. Because sometimes people think weight has reduced, but the weight is actually too much before and it is good that it's reducing. So we really need to have figures so that we are really sure of the contest. So I know mothers love big, plumpy babies, but what the pediatrician is more interested in is a healthy weight baby. Because sometimes too much weight is actually not good as well. In the same way, too little is not good. So let me know the weight of your baby now. But for me, I'm not worried about your baby eating twice a day. And you've not told me what exactly your baby is eating again. It's also important for us to have that contest. All right. Uh, Bells, I don't know. I don't think you know where the question box is. You don't know it because... I'm looking at the question box now and it's saying no questions yet. So you have not put it in the question box. If you have put it, I will say, it. I think you should put your question as coming because I don't really think you know where the question box is because if you put it, I will say it. Uh, please talk, my two-year-old eats bread a lot. You are the one giving the baby the bread. Your two-year-old will not eat what you didn't give the child. So if you think your baby is eating bread a lot, then don't give too much bread a lot. I mean, it's parents and that is parents. So you are the one that decide how often you offer bread, how often you put bread in the house. Okay. So it is up to you to decide how much your baby will eat. Uh, it can eat six slices at different times a day. I mean, it depends. So for a two-year-old, want your baby to have meal times. You want to have meal time and bread should not be the snack. Okay. Bread is not the snack we're talking about. When we talk about every snack, we're talking about fruits, it's talking about veggies and all that. So that should be what the child should take as snacks, like banana and all those things, like apple and fruits. So bread should be a meal. So if you want to make it a breakfast meal, then the child can have it as breakfast meal. And that is okay, fine. So you can limit what your children have access to. You can have regular meal times. So this is breakfast time. This is lunch time. This is dinner time. Then in between breakfast and lunch, they can have the snacks. And for the snacks, healthy snacks, preferably should be what the children should have in between. So it is all up to us to decide uh, what is available for the children, okay? Children will always go for what they love. I mean, it's natural. They can always eat whatever they like as long as they have access to it, which is not right. So you as a parent are the one that's going to regulate what they have access to. So it's better you have your fruits as, as your snacks that is out on the that is accessible to anyone. So every other thing else you need, you know how to lock up your fridge or your cupboard so that they don't have access to it. So it is all about parenting at that point. Your children will only eat what you offer them. What you don't make available, they're not going to eat it. So I hope that is clear. All right, so let's just go back to Facebook. Um Okay, yeah, I think Shakira is saying, thank you so much for the tips. My third question was that my two-year-old used to talk when he wants to pee or poo, okay? But once he sees his peer group, he gets carried away with play and won't talk. He would rather pee or poo on his body. How do you handle that? So you must learn, the best option is to let to take your children at that age because at that age, honestly speaking, a two-year-old, they are still learning to 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 potty train. So what I would say is that that child is not yet fully potty trained. When a child is fully potty trained, it doesn't matter who they see, they will go to the toilet because they know that they have to go to the toilet. So when they are still at that stage, what the teachers do in the crash is that they take them to the toilet at regular intervals. So if you take them to the toilet every two hours or every three hours, then they will, they will just get used to it. So even when the friends are there, as soon as you know your child has that tendency, don't wait for the child to tell you, I want to pee. Just take him to the toilet every two hours, every three hours. They, most of them can hold their bladder that long. So you just make sure you take the child there, all right? So that is what we expect you to be doing until the child knows. The child doesn't even have to tell you I need to use the potty. They should just know to go to the toilet, especially if they are home. So even if they are in the crash, they should just know they need to go there. So they don't always have to come and say, I want to go. They just go. So that is many of being fully potty trained. So they go, they know where the potty is, they go for it, and actually if it's to we, if it's to poo, of course, they will still need your help to wipe them after afterwards. So you really need to, at, at, the point, at that point, you need to deliberately, so like if you're going out in your car, you make sure they go to the toilet first before you go out. When you get to where you are going, within one hour or two hours, you make sure you want to go to the toilet, take them to the toilet. Just let him get used to that routine, and after a while, 
it becomes part of him. So whenever he feels the hudge, he will just go by himself. That is the definition of being fully potty trained. Even if you are not there, the child will find the toilet either in school or her home. So I'm not really worried about a two-year-old who is still going through the because this is the phase when they are learning. So you can see helping to get it into his uh into his uh, uh routine and then after a while then they know what to do. But they still need your help with cleaning up, you know, at this age, even to like four or five, most of them still need our help supervise, supervising them in cleaning, wiping, especially after the step number two. They really need your help with that one. All right. So the next question, please, apart from my genetic aspect, is there any reason why you think for the bottle is not allowed for babies? Oh, okay. There are many reasons why pediatricians we don't like feeding bottles. Number one, when babies are still learning to breastfeed, we don't want them to have what we call nipple confusion. So there's what we call nipple confusion. Nipple confusion means your breast is a nipple, you know, then the bottle is actually another nipple. And of course, your for your own breast, the baby has to do a lot of work to suck out the milk. Whereas for the bottle, especially for those of us, you know, most of you will actually puncture that teeth and the, the hole is big. So immediately you put it in their mouth, the milk just kind of, it's just flowing. The baby doesn't really need to do any work. The milk just rush into their mouth. So I say intelligent children that they have, they find that it's easier to take milk because you already have the milk there and it's just, drop, you know, they just open their mouth and the thing is flowing. Whereas for breast, they have to suck it. So after a while, the baby found that it's better I suck the bottle. It's less stressful than for me to suck the breast. So they will definitely go for bottle rather than the breast milk and then that's the end of breastfeeding because if your baby is not sucking then the breast milk production is going to go down low and that's it and then mother will say oh, my my breast is not flowing again my baby doesn't want to take breast my baby all wants to take bottle. it's what we call nipple confusion so we don't want your baby to be on bottle especially when they are still learning to breastfeed because you are going to cause nipple confusion and i see that question all the time oh my baby will if I if I spread the breast milk and put it in the bottle, baby will suck it. But when I put the baby to the breast, baby doesn't want to suck my breast. It's either number one, you are not attaching your baby to the breast properly. In other words, if it's just a nipple, the baby is sucking on the nipple, nothing will come out, and then the baby gets frustrated. Whereas the baby puts the bottle on, the milk is just flowing handlessly. Then why would the baby want to go for breastfeeding? Baby will want to go for bottle feeding. So it is that nipple confusion that has happened. So we don't want bottles until baby are well established on breastfeeding to avoid nipple confusion, which is the worst thing, because once your baby stops sucking on your breast, you kind of, you started winning the baby, then it's a matter of time, your breast will stop flowing, because breast milk is demand and supply. The more the baby suck, the more the milk will flow. If the baby does not suck, the milk is not gonna flow. It's as simple as that. So that is the number one thing, nipple confusion. Number two, of course, is the fact that you can never easily clean the bottle it's not possible all right because the 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 the, the teeth is a place where bacteria and all those things can easily hide all right and so your baby is sucking not just the milk it's sucking bacteria culture and that is why babies on bottle feeding are prone to diarrhea okay they are prone to diarrhea because i know you all say you wash and you all sterilize but it is never hundred percent. So whereas your breast milk is straight sterile from the source, so your babies babies that are bottle fed are likely going to have diarrhea compared to babies that are formal. I mean that are directly breastfed. So again, why we don't like bottle, and of course, so those are the two major reasons, you know, that we don't like bottle feeding. All right. And then, of course, there are other issues with water, with all those things that come with bottle, hygiene, washing hands. Many people don't, many people will use bottle feeding, then they will, when the baby does not finish the milk, they keep it. And then the next day, the next hour, they just give the same bottle, unfinished milk. You are just giving a culture because there's bacteria all over the place. So, but when they settle in the milk, over an hour, they begin to multiply. So when you give your baby that kind of a milk, your baby can have um, culture of uh, 
it's taking milk with the bacterial culture as well, and the child is going to have diarrhea and all that. So, generally, pediatricians we don't like bottle. We don't like bottle. If you want to give a baby milk, you can give it with cup and spoon. We prefer that. I know it's not as convenient like the bottle feeding, but that's that's to avoid all these scenarios. Of course, you know if you have to and you have to, of course, you can make your best. Make sure I was telling us if some people are like, oh, there's no way I can do. Uh, uh, cup feeding and I just have the, you must make sure you wash it it's, it's better you have like on like many bottles so that when they use one that's the end of for that they don't attempt to, to reuse that one which, which is what most parents do even though you sterilize it at the beginning but you use it instead of you to sterilize again they don't they just reuse it you know you have all well, the effort has been wasted so it's better to have like all the bottles out one is used then that's the end for that day you hope another one you use and all that. But if you can avoid it, it's best not to do bottle feeding at so I hope that's helpful. Um, somebody say, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. First time for me to be able to listen here. Oh, that's lovely. Welcome. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Following. Good evening. Uh, somebody, Shakira said, what's the average number of times a child should be in a day? A child should not be more than seven times a day, four to seven times a day. So your baby is playing like every 40 to 50 minutes. It's sad that the child is just playing you because some children just like to go to the toilet all the time or there's something wrong. You know, like children who have uh, urinary tract infection, children with diabetes, either diabetes mellitus or diabetes insipidus, they go to the toilet too frequently. So if you are sure that each time your child goes to the toilet, they pee, you need to see a pediatrician because they should not be paying more than seven times in 24 hour period so i hope that's helpful and again also if the child drinks a lot of water because i'm going to drink so much then they have to go a lot so again you have to balance it so that anyway see the pediatrician they will ask all the next question they will test the urine then they will know whether they should worry or not another person said my baby does not like taking water He's seriously constipated. How old is this your baby? We always like to start with the age of the baby. Uh, I've tried giving water when he's hungry instead of food, but it's serious water. He's selected with fruits. Phyllis, water of magnesia was prepared by your mom. Is your mom a doctor or a nurse? I don't know. Anyway, should I give him? I have not the one to answer that question because I'm not the one to say what, what your, that's why I feel like your mom is a doctor or a nurse. What you really need to do is to get your baby to drink water. It's not enough to give the drugs for the constipation. We need to get to the roots of the, why the child is constipated. And you've not even told us the age of your baby. Okay, so a child can drink water. There's no reason why your child should not drink water. You have to present it in a different way. So um, you, most mothers try to force babies to finish a cup of water at a go. It's not going to work. Let them take several sips throughout the day. You can get them this kind of bottles, you know, their sippy cups. You didn't tell us the age of your child. It's so important for us to know the age of this child we're talking about. So we give the right context, okay? So, and fruits, your child can take smoothies. The fruits can be put in their cereal. There are many ways you can cook your rice and cut all the peas and everything inside. There are many ways to give veggies and fruits to baby. Baby can eat swallow with the away to or okra. There are many ways around it. So you have to for, for address the underlying issue. Or hence, your child will always be having constipation, and you always have to use drugs for constipation. There are drugs for constipation. Most of them are over the counter, like lactulose, like paraffin, um, mm. like Movicol. Your pharmacist can give you all those ones. But more importantly, is the reason why your child is constipated. The child needs to eat the right food, food that are rich in fiber. The child needs to eat fruits, the child needs to eat veggies, the child needs to drink water, okay? The child should drink water throughout the day. If you give them like a spoon or two of, of water and then they take like every hour, you know, there are herbs this day that remind you to take water. They don't need to, and you also should model it for them. You drink water, you let them just see you drink water. Yeah, you to drink your own. They just take a little sip. That's fine. They go. Don't wait until it's meal time. And don't feed the baby's tummy with water when it's meal time. That is not helpful. Let them drink it throughout the whole day. It doesn't have to be with food. You have to just, you can measure the amount of water the child should take for the whole day. Put it in the sippy cups. You know, oh, children like all this fancy cup with their cartoon character and all those kind of things that they like. So buy those kind of things for them. 
and then they can drink it. You can also, for some children, you can give them a little bit of their juice uh, with the water just to, you know, sometimes give them motivation and like it doesn't have to be like all those sugary juice kind of like weak scotch even milk you know you can find a way of kind of giving make missing it up at least they are taking some liquid it's very important and you know with time it becomes part and parcel of them i hope that's helpful i'm not sure that facebook is like they always put the age of your child when you're asking questions so we have the right contest uh so let's say what's the idea for 11 months old 10 kilos uh, my baby doesn't like eating all the time. I have to have patience to feed her most of the times. Just pap. No, pap is not going to do for an 11 month old baby. 11 month old baby needs to eat more than pap. That is a recipe for malnutrition. Okay. Uh, the weight is 8.5, which is not bad, obviously, because baby is still sucking breast milk. Uh, 8.5 is not too far from normal, it's still within normal, but then. I'm not happy with what your child is eating, and 11 months old should not be taking PAP only. Mm -mm. So you have to go through our videos on complementary feeding, our guide session on complementary feeding, our feeding tips. We have lots of them. You have to find a way of getting the children to eat. They don't have to eat a big quantity. They just need to eat the right quality and, and quantity. The quantity really for this age is not that much. This child just needs to take like half a cup of food three times a day, but it shouldn't just be pap only. He does have to take veggies, have to take other protein, other fats and oil, all that, you know, all the various spices of food. So you need to get it right. Or else in a matter of time, this child is going to get malnourished. And we don't want that because that's another problem. And you're going to end up with the pediatrician in the hospital. We don't want that. So we can prevent it now. Even this pap, you need to add like crayfish, egg, palm oil, you know, fortify the pap first. But there are so many other cereals. There's no reason why this child should not be able to eat potato. Add, like, even if it's sweet potato or orange potato anymore, match it well. Put um, butter, okay? Put a little bit of your crayfish or titus fish, you know, you sh you know, put it shred it very tiny and mix it and give to them. They will take it. You know, smoothies. There are many options. There are many ways. So parents have to do more than you know the usual. You have to go extra and beyond. And even things like swallow, like soft amalgams, more with a way to or any of those drugs. So children likes it. You have to try. And when you try, you don't just try once and say you've given up. You have to try again and again and again. We've, we've talked about this several times. So you just have to go back. Since you're on our Facebook group, please ask this question outside, you know, like a separate question on its own. And I'm sure our moderator will direct you to the link for our guides on complementary feeding. It's so important that you go through that and you start doing the right thing. Well, you should keep breastfeeding. There's nothing wrong with breastfeeding, but the child should do more than breastfeeding. All right. Okay. Uh, our time is up. So I will quickly answer the, all the leftover questions. But please, let's stop asking more questions. You can put the question directly on the group and somebody will answer them. Cecilia, I say good. Thank you for putting up this event. I actually want to know if it's normal for four year old uh, to be having issues with defecating. What issue? Uh, he can still like two to three without passing to, and when he wants, it's always a problem. Okay, that sounds like constipation to me. Uh, yes, um, you need to definitely see a pediatrician if your child is having serious constipation. You've given fruits, you've given water, you've done everything. That's what you're telling me. I don't know whether you've given drugs for constipation and all that. If your child is always constipated, two to three weeks, and you definitely need to see a pediatrician. We need to take it higher from the usual stuff. That is something a doctor has to sort out. Okay, because there are other medical reasons why the child could be constipated. Uh, Odudele, good evening, Ma. Thank you so much for your love always. You're welcome. Please, my six month old baby at any time will be making sound like somebody wants to pull, even when he doesn't want to pull. What could be the cause? There's no cause. Babies do that a lot, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just leave them alone. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. Um, there's nothing wrong. Nothing is wrong. Babies just do that. It's just an habit. They do. Uh, I'm not worried about it. It's just if it's as long as the stool is fine. It's me low and make good for a baby of three years. 
children can take beverages, but I hope that's not the only thing they take. So, and, and I hope they are not taking it like throughout the whole day and they don't, don't have time to eat no more food. So I always want to qualify my answer to that question. There's nothing wrong with them taking beverages from the age of one year, but please, they should not be drinking tea throughout the day and then there's no, no space in their tummy for food. You know, please, no, they should, they, if I thought they would take beverage, maybe once, a day, maybe in the morning, preferably, because it's not good to give them at night, if you, actually, if you don't want them to start bedwetting and all that. So once a day, it's fine. But more importantly, they should eat other food as well. Okay, let's just finish the questions in, in Instagram. Okay, I think I've asked Fifi's, I've answered Fifi's question. Uh, well, so I mean, you just keep saying you drop your question in the question, so and we couldn't say it all the time. You've been saying you drop your question in the question box. If you have written the question there, then I would have read it and I would have answered it. I don't really understand because I've told you that to do that. You could just have instead of saying I've dropped my question here, just write the question, it's easier that way. I would have seen it. You didn't drop it because I can't see, don't drop it as a DM. The question box is different from our DM. So I'm not, I can't see my DM even now because I'm live. So you have to, there's a quest. If you look at the Instagram face, you will see a place where they put a, a circular something and they put question mark in the middle. That is what you're supposed to click on. And that's where you're supposed to write your question. And I'm clicking on it. There's no question there. So it doesn't, you means you have not dropped your question. But since you don't know how to do that, you were able to drop comments. The best thing is instead of writing, I've dropped my question, I just write the question and I will answer them. Or alternatively, you can go to our Facebook group. Maybe it's a question that is sensitive and you don't want, you want to ask anonymously. You can always post that on our Facebook group and we will answer them. Okay, final question. I think Samara, my two year old is bred a lot. Okay, I've answered that one. Uh, if you have answered your question, no, maybe you left and you have not come back. I've answered your question. Uh, she was sitting three times a day. I've answered your question. I've answered your question so thoroughly. Okay, Bells, I'm just, you finally asked your question. Thank you. My 11 months old baby has a measles rash. Mm -hmm. Okay. She runs temperature for three days. Use ibuprofen. She stopped running temperature. And then the Mrs. Rush breakout starting from behind her ears. Uh, the temperature is completely gone, but the rash is itchy and has spread all over her body. She's active. So, what is the question? I mean, better because she's not asked any question. Number one, I usually don't take parents' diagnosis of measles because it's not every rash that is measles. Your child has a fever and a rash. We we'll call it viral exantem, but it takes most likely a doctor. Sometimes even doctors have to do blood tests to confirm it's actually measles. But you've not told me what your question is because I don't understand what the question is. So is, is it a rash? How to handle the rash? You can apply something like calamine lotion. It will suit the rash. The rash will go on its own. It will, it will fade over time. There's nothing you have to do about the rash. But if it is so itchy, you can just apply calamine lotion and it will give the child some soothing relief. That's it. Uh, is that a guide for potty training? Yes, we have a potty training uh, article on our website. So if you go to www.axpedations.com, just type potty training in our quest, I mean, the search icon, it bring out the, the article on potty training. God bless you, man, God bless you, okay. Uh, well, okay, I think you've got the answer to your question because I didn't see the question, but if it's the rash you're worried about, just apply calamine lotion and all that. Um, how old is your baby again? Let me see. Say 11 months old. Please make sure your baby also take the Mrs. Vaccine at 15 months. Don't forget because we always, we are always not sure your baby had Mrs. So we need to make sure your, your baby, um, uh take mrs oh, i mean the mrs vaccine all right rounding up uh somebody said my baby has white patches on the tongue how old is your baby 11 months old uh growing up okay white patches in the mouth we need to say we need to know whether it's oral thrush or not and more importantly than knowing it's oral thrush which is a fungal infection which requires antifungal medication we also need to know why the child is having the oral thrush and so that we can address it as well. So uh, Facebook user, you may want to post a picture of these white patches 
uh, because some white patches on the tongue is actually the milk coating, and all you need to do is to brush it out. But the one that is due to oral choice, when you try to remove it, it, it bleeds. It's, it's caused some like wounds in the mouth. So you know it's oral trash. That requires treatment by a doctor. They need to prescribe. Usually we prescribe what we call um, nystatin oral suspension. So the doctors can prescribe that for you. Um, and also check that there's no other reason why your baby is having uh, the fungal infection. Make sure the child's immune status is okay and all that. So I recommend you see a doctor preferably. And somebody say thank you. Uh, can you direct me? We need to have a one-to-one -one consultation with a pediatrician. Okay, if you want to have one-to-one -one consultation with our pediatricians, send us a WhatsApp message. I'm sure you can see it on my screen. Yeah, you can see it on my back. So our WhatsApp number is on the screen. You can see that. Just send us a WhatsApp message and our admin person will direct you appropriately. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. I think I've answered everybody's question. Uh, time has gone. Um, I think somebody is asking a question, but time has gone. So, if, uh, if if I don't, if I'm not able to answer your question, because we're supposed to stop by seven, it's already seven eleven. I'm already eleven minutes over. So, feel free to go to our Facebook group, post your questions there. We have lots of professionals and moderators, and they will be able to answer your questions for you. So, feel free. To, to, the groups are open Mondays to Saturdays. Uh, please don't ask a question our DM. We can't answer questions in DM because our DM is powered by non-medical people. So you have to put your questions in the groups and one of our moderators or professionals, they'll be able to answer your question. All right, so thank you so much everyone. And you can always watch all the past episodes. You can rewatch this episode if you joined us late and you want to watch all the past episodes. It's on our IGTV for those on Instagram. It is on our uh, YouTube channel, ATP TV. Uh, just type Axe Foundation or ATP TV with double E at the end. Or you can also watch on our Facebook pages. You can just go to the video section. You can watch all our videos there and you can get all the answers to this question. Or you can even watch videos that are very, very specific, you know, to the particular topic you are interested in. All right. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate you joining me. For those who have asked questions, I hope I was able to answer your question. If you still want more clarity, feel free to post on our Facebook group. We'll be able to provide more support for you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again, same time next week. On Thursday, I also do ATP Hour, where we talk about specific topics. You can also watch that, but that's only on Facebook and YouTube, not on Instagram. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.